This is a Mike Phoenix dueling guide. Hey everyone, it's Mike Phoenix, and we're doing the updated hero deck um, post October ban list. To start off, we have the triple copy of Stratos. Uh, triple copy because we run three a hero lives, so this card is very good at three. He's your searcher. In late game, he can clear back row if needed. Next is Elemental Hero Shadow Mist. I run at two. When she special summon, she can search mass change. And when she sends her graveyard, you can search for a hero. But you can only use one of those effects. You can use both the same turn. Next is the one Elemental Hero Liquid Soldier. Basically, when he gets normal summon, you're going to summon Shadow Mist from the graveyard so you can get your mass change. I only run one because you don't really want to see this in your hand. This is a card you want to search. Although if you get, have it in your opening hand, that's not bad. It's just you don't want multiple copies in your hand, so run it at one. One element to hear Honest Neos. Basically when your op uh, opponent declares attack on one of your heroes, you're going to beef it up with Honest Neos. Typically it's going to be used to protect Dark Law. You only run one because you don't want to see this card in your hand. This is a card you would search. And if you run multiple copies, they're kind of useless. Two copies of Destiny Hero Malicious and two copies because it's illegal to run three. Basically, if this is in your graveyard, you banish it to summon this from the deck. And that effect is not once per turn. Next is the one Destiny Hero Denier. Basically, it acts like our third Malicious. Um, when it's summoned and you control a Destiny Hero, you can move a Destiny Hero that is banished to the top of your deck which is going to be the militia that you banished and that's once per turn and the second effect is once per duel and it's basically if you control a destiny hero in the on the field or if there's one in the graveyard other than denier you can summon this card onto the field next is one destiny hero plasma you only run one because it's a brick if you run more than one you need three you need to tribute three monsters to summon it that's why it's a brick um, it negates all the effects of face-up monster opponent controls and once per turn during your turn you can equip one monster your opponent controls and it gains half of its attack. One Destiny Hero Dark Angel. It's going to be used with DPE to basically summon it to your opponent's field and your opponent can no longer activate spells. So basically it's a floodgate for your opponent. And you only run one because it's not really useful other than that. 3 Vision Hero Ferris. Ferris is going to be your main starter. He's going to help you basically climb all the way to Dark Log. Only effect, or uh, I guess issue, is when you use his effect, you can only summon heroes from the extra deck. So if you're going to use Super Poly and not make a hero, you need to do that before you start the Ferris combo. And again, you want 3 because this is your starting combo. Next is 2 Vision Hero Viron. Basically, when you summon, he sends a hero from your deck to the graveyard and you can banish one hero from your graveyard and then you can search Polly. Um, you run two because if he's in your hand, he is a starter because again, you can send something to the graveyard like Mali or Shadow Mist. But if he's not in your hand, he's just going to be used for the uh, Vision Hero combo. One Vision Hero increase. He's part of the Vision Hero package where he's going to be set as a spawn trap and then you tribute one of your heroes and he gets summoned and then can summon Viron. I would keep it at one. You never want to see this card in your hand. It's probably the worst opening. Besides two malicious, um, he's like the last card you want to see in your hand. So keep it at one. Three, Fusion Destiny. You're going to use this card to summon DPE. Or Dangerous, because again, Dangerous can basically get Dark Law at the end. Or Dystopia, if you're going third and you need to do burn damage. But basically, you're just going to summon DPE and try to get Dark Angel on their field. Next is three copies of A Hero Lives. It could, uh, star starter card, basically you summon an Elemental Hero that's level 4 or lower, but you have to pay half of your life points. This could be a good um, Ash Blossom bait, but you are going to pay half your life points for that Ash Blossom. Basically, you're going to target Stratos to get your missing Ferris piece, or you're going to summon Shadow Mist to get that mass change and get Dark Law. 
and you run three because again it's a good starter. Next is two copies of Polymerization. You're going to use this card to make your fusions. You run two because you run two Virons, so you can use its effect to search polys. Also, having this in your hand is not bad because if you brick, you can use poly to get rid of those bricks by some mean or fusion. So if you have like plasma and malicious, you can get TPE or, or you know dangerous or the dystopia. Or you know, depending on what you have, you can summon something so you're not just bricked. One miracle fusion because it's searchable from sunrise. You only run one because you don't want this in your hand, you want to search it with Sunrise. And basically you're going to use this to summon Absolute Zero, or a different Omni Hero depending on what's in your graveyard. Next is three copies of Mass Change. You want Mass Change because it gets your Mass T-Rows out. Having this in your opening hand is not bad. And using Shadow Mist more than once to search it more copies, you know, is good. You want to summon Dark Law, and this is a great way to ensure it. Next is three Super Polys. Super Polys are broken in Heroes because you can summon the Omni Heroes, or you can summon Starving Venom Dragon, Garura, the Pedra Plant, and the Dragon. So, you know, this is a really good board breaker because it can't respawn. And with Wonder Driver, you can reset it. So that's kind of broken. And yeah, you won't run three because, again, it's a board breaker, so you want to have it in your opening hand. One copy of Rhoda, Reinforcements of the Army. You run one because it's limited to one. You can search a level four lower warrior monster, which includes Strato, Shadow Mist, Liquid Soldier, Denier, and Dark Angel. You should use this card first to try to bait an Ash Blossom. So if you have this and a Hero Lives, use Reinforcement of the Army first, then a Hero Lives. Next is one Foolish Burial. You're gonna use this to send Shadow Mist or Malicious, or if needed, but shouldn't be, you could send Denier as well. One Monster Reborn, it's limited to one, so we can only run one. Basically, when your opponent can counter DPE, you're gonna use this card to get DPE back. And one of the biggest counters to DPE is Zeus, because you're gonna activate DPE, and then they're gonna chain Zeus to blow everything up, including DPE, so then your DPE is gonna go and you can't, you know, resummon it, but with Monster Reborn, you can summon it back. And other than DPE, you could use this to revive Shadow Mist from the graveyard, so you then you can search, you know, your mass change. Next is the one called by the grave. This should be in every single deck, and you can only run one, so that's why it's not one in my deck. Basically, it's a counter to Ash Blossom, or if depending what deck you're going, you can banish something in their graveyard so they can't continue their plays. The next three cards round it out to a 40 card deck and it's two droplets and infinite impermanence. Forbidden droplet. It's pretty good because you can discard heroes as the cost and you're gonna you know negate your opponent's monsters. Infinite impermanence is the same thing, you can just negate the monster. And this one can be activated from the hand. While these can't, these are still good going first or second. If you're going second, you're going to activate these first. If you're going first, you're just going to set these. And you could replace, you could have three of um, Forbidden Droplets or in Infinite Impermanence, but I prefer kind of mixing it, and I think Forbidden Droplets is better going uh, blindly into the set. And for a 43 card deck, I would play Rivalry of the Warlords. I don't have that card yet. I'm getting some copies. Um, I know they're pretty cheap, I just don't have any, but I'm going to try running that in Locals and seeing how I do. I've seen a lot of people suggest it, but I do think it might be a bit, I think it might be overextension of your plays, because everyone says, oh, you have Dark Angel, and on their field, and you play uh, Warlords, they're stuck with Warrior, but it's also like, you have to draw it, and Dark Angel enough is sometimes good. Um... After this ban list, we might see Drytron though. Um, they might be one of the few decks that actually do play uh, Link 1 monster, so they can link it away. But mostly right now, I haven't seen anyone really stop Dark Angel. And either they scoop or they try to troll and drag out the match for some reason just to stall time. But I think Dark Angel alone pretty much secures the win. But with uh, Warlord, yeah, you can 100% secure it. 
Mass Hero Dark Law. Basically, it's a macrocosmo for your opponent. And if they draw a card outside of the draw phase, you randomly select a card and it's banished. One Mass Hero Blast. Basically, if you summon Stratos and it's about to get negated, you can just mass change into it. So you can still use its effect because it won't be on the board for it to be negated. And it could help, you know, with back row, depending what it is. If it's um, Mystic Mind, you can't activate its effect. So it's not useful against Mystic Mind. Mass Hero Acid at one. Basically, if you have absolute zero and they have a back row, you can mass change. So one, absolute zero destroys all their monsters and then acid will destroy the entire back row. Next is one Cross Crusader. I change it back to one because I've never seen myself really use two. And if I've used two, it's been like a last minute effort to not even win. So to me, there's no point. But basically when it's summoned, you can revive a destiny hero and then you can tribute a destiny hero and then search any monster. So this is going to be part of your Vision Hero package. Next is one Wonder Driver, Extra Hero Wonder Driver. Basically, when you summon a, mo a hero monster here or here, you know, to where the arrows point to, you can reset one of your used either polys or super polys or mass change. I would definitely pick super poly. If you're running through super polys, you might as well run a fourth, which is going to be by setting it back. A pretty broken card. If you run Super Poly, I think you should run this. One Elemental Hero Sunrise. Basically, when the summon is going to search your Miracle Fusion for basically Absolute Zero or Grand Tornado. And when a hero battles, you can pop one card. And also, it beefs up your all your heroes by the different attributes, including the one that it currently is. So you have at least one light, it's going to boost everything by 200 then you know your summon absolute zero is going to be 400 and zeros and etc one absolute zero basically you're going to summon this with your liquid soldier and another hero or if your opponent is playing water then <laughs> you just need to give up a hero then use one of their waters monsters one element to hero great tornado it's win so you can use it against I think, uh, what is it, a bird statue, and Philander Freeze, or just any wind monster. Um, great super poly target. One Destiny Hero Dangerous. Destiny Hero Dangerous, if you can summon it with Fusion Destiny, it's basically going to be a one card Dark Law. You go through the combo, you're going to get Dark Law, which is, you know, very oppressive to your opponent. One DPE. The DPE, you're basically going to destroy DPE and one of your opponent's cards every turn. And if you have DPE, I really suggest using Monster Reborn because most good decks have some sort of counter to this. And if they don't banish it and it's still in the graveyard, you can Monster Reborn it. Next is Destiny Hero Dystopia. This is basically for going third and there's time. You're just gonna burn your opponent. A lot of duels always end in time and you might as well take advantage of D Dystopia and do the burn damage. But I would not recommend this card in round one or round two. Starving Venom Dragon at one. We're gonna super poly two dark monsters. In my opinion, this is better than Escuriado. So I if you run both or consider running both, I would just run this one. I think having both is an overkill. This takes care of the dark condition. Plus, you don't need an element of hero for Escuriado. You can just use any of your dark monsters. If obviously your opponent doesn't have to. Kagura, Wings of the Resonant Life. At one, basically most decks do run, you know, monsters have the same type and attribute with different names. So this is a good super poly card because you can use grab two of their, you know, boss monsters that are the same type. Pedro Plant. Pedro Plant is very good in a meta where there's fusion monsters. And right now there is. So basically it's one fusion monster, one dark monster. And then you can add counters to basically change the level of your opponent's monsters, which basically can stop them from doing certain, I guess, you know, XE summons. So yeah, this is a very good super poly target. And last super poly target is Madragon of the Swamp, and it's 
two monsters with the same attribute but different types. This one sometimes is harder to pull off, but I would still have it just in case, you know, depending on what deck you're going for. So, I'm sorry, going again. So, it's either going to be Gagora or Madragon. Next is the extra deck with three Dark Blue, Ruler No More. Um, you could run this in your main deck instead of the Forbidden Droplets, but I think if you go first, this card is kind of useless where Forbidden Droplet. It's good either going first or second. Next we have two. I'm gonna group these together because they kind of try accomplish the same thing, but two DD Crow and one Silent Graveyard. Um, basically, like you could have three DD Crows, um, but I think just having this one is a crazy haymaker. But they all accomplish the same thing. You're just trying to, uh, with DD Crow, you're gonna banish one of your opponent's monsters. And with Silent Graveyard, you're not going to allow them to activate effects from the graveyard. Um, basically, you're trying to stop them from using the graveyard. Next is back row removal. Um, and in this meta, basically, it's going to be Mystic Mind because it ain't ban it. But Harpy Feather Duster, Twin Twister, and Spiritualism. Spiritualism is, you know, crazy. And again, I group these three together because they accomplish the same thing, just back row. Um, spiritualism basically can be negated, so if you see Mystic Mind and use this, they can't activate a trap or anything to prevent you from uh, sending back the Mystic Mind. Twin Twister, you can discard a card, which again, if you have Militia Shadow Mist, that'll be pretty good. And just clear, you know, two cards, and then Harpy Fell Duster, just destroy all spawn traps. The next three, are, I guess it could be called Board Breaker. Um, the two evenly matched, and then I kind of grouped it together with one Lightning Storm. Um, Lightning Storm, either it's you know back row or front row, but I feel like maybe if you have like a heavy a back row heavy opponent, having this to clearing the back row would be good. Uh, evenly match again, <laughs> go into battle phase, clear everything, pretty good card. And then for the last three cards. Um, just triple copies of Ash Blossom. Um, Ash Blossom is always going to be meta relevant, and you know, against decks you haven't played before, and you're not really sure where to, you know, use your other meta cards. You just know Ash Blossom is, you know, could stop, you know, the other non-meta decks that you're fighting against. Because again, not everyone plays meta decks at locals or higher, and so Ash Blossom is, you know, a very versatile card to always have. Maybe not in your main deck, but at least in your side deck. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and leave a like and comment. Let me know what you guys want to see in the future.